Granby ownership of this house, or we're heading straight for a divorce. My husband's ultimatum hit me like a freight train. Here I was, suddenly backed into a corner by Bob. This house, a sanctuary filled with the echoes of my parents' presence, held a cherished place in my heart. Surrendering it was out of the question. Yet Bob seemed willing to toy with my emotions, brandishing threats as if they were mere trifles. Confusion clouded my mind as I grappled with this impossible situation. Seeking guidance, I turned to my father for support. I am Jessica, 30 years of age, a devoted homemaker shouldering the responsibilities of our household day in and day out. Bob and I have been bound in matrimony for nearly two years now, but the weight of his demands threatens to rupture the foundation of our marriage. Since I left my job to marry him, he has been tirelessly providing for us. However, everything changed in an instant following the passing of my father-in-law. My mother-in-law abruptly decided to move into our apartment, and our once ordinary daily life shattered. What struck me most was the abruptness of it all. The news of my mother-in-law's impending move came just one day before she was set to join us in our home. Hey, so mom's dropping by tomorrow, my husband announced casually as he walked through the door, as if it were the most insignificant news. And it's not just a visit, she's actually moving in, so uh, we should probably tidy up a bit. The words hit me like a ton of bricks. My mother-in-law, moving in with us? It seemed like such a sudden and monumental shift. But my husband seemed unfazed, as if it were the most natural thing in the world. Yeah, it's kind of a given, right? Mom shouldn't be alone back home, he added nonchalantly, as if it were a simple matter of fact. Reflecting on the situation, I couldn't shake the feeling that my husband's approach was somewhat unusual. Typically, a husband would discuss such a significant decision with his wife beforehand. Yet, in my case, it seemed as though the decision had been made before I was even consulted. True to my husband's words, the next afternoon, my mother-in-law arrived, bringing with her a substantial amount of baggage, both literal and figurative. Hello, mother-in-law. It's been a while. Please come in. I greeted her warmly, but her expression seemed anything but pleased. Wait, Jessica, aren't you supposed to pick me up from the station? She questioned, her tone tinged with disappointment. Oh, I... I wasn't sure about your arrival time, I admitted hesitantly. You should have called and asked, shouldn't you? She chided, her disapproval evident. Feeling a pang of guilt, I apologized. I'm sorry. Muttering to herself, my mother-in-law settled herself onto the sofa with an air of entitlement. The following day marked the onset of her snide remarks, conveniently commencing as soon as my husband departed for work. Jessica, why are you so lax? The dishes and laundry should take precedence in the mornings, she criticized, her tone dripping with disapproval. I apologize. I'll attend to the laundry as soon as I finish up here, I assured her. I'm telling you, the priorities in this household are all wrong. Laundry should come first after breakfast, she insisted firmly. Even if you believe that, please refrain from speaking to me in such a manner. It's disrespectful for a daughter-in-law to challenge her mother-in-law. I can't help but wonder about your upbringing, she retorted sharply. I have my own schedule for the day, too. Why can't she grasp that? It's not as if I'm neglecting my responsibilities. I'm used to myself, feeling a twinge of frustration. It appeared that my mother-in-law simply couldn't accept my way of doing things. Even when I followed her instructions, she managed to find fault, especially during the times when it was just the two of us alone during the day. One day, a clandestine plan took shape in my mind, a plan to liberate ourselves from living under the same roof as my mother-in-law. The strategy was simple. We would relocate to a house that my father had bestowed upon me, with my parents having recently embarked on a rural lifestyle following my father's early retirement. They graciously handed over their former residence to me. Thankfully, the distance between our current apartment and the new house wasn't vast, and discussions about moving to a more spacious dwelling had already commenced. Enduring the ongoing presence of my mother-in-law, even for someone as resilient as myself, had become intolerable. If that were the case, I reasoned, it was preferable to expedite our departure, just my husband and me. 
With determination in my heart, I resolved to present this proposal to my husband without delay. Bob, can we talk for a moment? I have something on my mind. A discussion? What's up? You remember the house my dad gave us? How about we consider moving there? Oh, that house. We did talk about it for the future, but why the sudden interest? I've been having some difficulties with your mom. What? She hasn't mentioned anything like that. Anyhow, I'm finding it increasingly difficult to continue living with your mother, so I'm seriously contemplating a move. I understand. The new place isn't too far, and my mom can stay here in the apartment. To my surprise, my husband readily embraced the idea of moving. He discussed it with my mother-in-law, and within a week, we were preparing for the move. Frankly, I anticipated more resistance from her, but she agreed without much ado. Not only did she agree, but she also bid us farewell with a broad smile on her face. Bob, Jessica, take care. I apologize for the abrupt departure. No need to apologize. You have your father's house now, don't you? That's fantastic. Thank you. And please, don't hesitate to visit us. Well, it's just a stone's throw away. We'll definitely come by often. Looking forward to it. After completing the necessary formalities, we made our way to our new abode. Deep down, a sense of relief washed over me. No longer would I have to endure my mother-in-law's cutting remarks. At last, we could reclaim our freedom. I had braced myself for potential resistance, but I was grateful for my courage in broaching the subject with Bob. However, little did I know, this was just the beginning. As the burden of my mother-in-law's presence lifted from my shoulders, my husband's behavior began to change. He started arriving home later and later, and there were even nights when he didn't return at all. It wasn't due to overtime or late-night outings. He was spending his evenings with his mother. My mom needs me, my husband would insist. Yet, the frequency of his absences was becoming too much to ignore. He would slip away to her place for meals without a word to me, or he'd be gone for entire days. As a result, my own daily rhythm was unraveling. It was becoming clear that something had to change. Finally, one day, I decided to address the issue head-on. Bob, don't you think you're spending too much time away from home? Really? But I'm only at my mom's. That's not the issue. Just give me a heads up. I end up preparing extra food unnecessarily. You could always have it the next day, Jessica. You're at home all the time. Just because I'm not around doesn't mean you don't need to be informed. Well, isn't that the reality? Being a stay-at-home wife means you're just lounging around at home, isn't it? What? Besides, I'm concerned about leaving my mom on her own. Ada will be back soon, and I have to discuss something with my mom about that. Ada is returning? Ada, my husband's younger sister, currently resides abroad for work. I was taken aback by the news of her impending return. But what exactly did my husband need to discuss with his mother regarding Ada's arrival? It's coming home, huh? But do we really have to involve mother-in-law in this discussion? I inquired, my curiosity peaked. Of course we do. Ada will be moving in with us, my husband confirmed. What, really? Apparently, Ava has been accustomed to living in a fairly spacious home overseas, and now she's insisting on having something similar here. That's why I believe she'll end up staying in this house, my husband explained. What? This sudden twist left me utterly speechless. My sister-in-law moving into the house, we had just managed to escape from my mother-in-law's presence. And now this, wait a minute, Bob. This is the house my dad left me. Why would Ada? Well, you remember our old apartment where we used to live, right? Mother-in-law is living there now, and it's too cramped for her. So the only feasible option for a larger space is this one. Bob elaborated. Don't make decisions like that on your own. I never agreed to living with Ada, I protested. Oh, we won't be living together. We're getting the house to Ada, my husband clarified. What? What are you talking about? I exclaimed in disbelief. Look, we're moving back in with mother-in-law. Ada can have this house and make it her own, he explained calmly. I felt like the ground was slipping from under my feet 
a complete disregard for common sense almost causing me to lose my balance. Despite my repeated assertions that I had no intention of living together, Bob seemed to have reached a breaking point. Can you please stop this? We're only able to live here because of me, so just listen and be quiet. My husband snapped. Don't joke around. This is the house I inherited. Why would Ada? This house is too nice for you to live in, isn't it? Ava has been living abroad for a long time, and I promised her a spacious house. I can't go back on my word now. I don't care. I'm not okay with this. All you do is complain, I retorted. Forget it. Let's both cool off. I'm going back to mother-in-law's for a while, he concluded before storming out. With that, Bob slammed the door behind him and stormed out of the house. Left alone in the room, tears began to well up in my eyes. Why does he always make decisions without consulting me? This house holds sentimental value to me. It's my cherished inheritance, yet he's giving it away to my sister-in-law. This is no laughing matter. Every day, I received messages from Bob, questioning if I had come to my senses yet, and urging me to return to the house. Each time, I stood my ground and replied, I won't give in. Then, one day, Bob's patience with my stubbornness reached its limit. He called me in a fit of rage. Jessica, when are you going to come over here? I've asked you countless times. Bob's voice crackled over the phone. I'm not going, and I have no intention of handing over this house to Ada. I replied firmly. That's enough. I've already informed Ada she's returning this week. Stop making a scene, Bob retorted, his tone growing impatient. Don't make decisions unilaterally. This house was passed down to me by dad. It's mine. Why should I surrender it for your family's sake? I shot back, frustration bubbling up inside me. Watch your tone. Mother-in-law is upset. Don't make things worse, Bob warned, his voice tense with irritation. What about my feelings? I countered, feeling my patience wearing thin. Bob's frustration was palpable, evident in the heavy sigh he let out over the phone. Then, unexpectedly, he dropped a bombshell. If you refuse to listen to me, we're getting a divorce. You understand. By tomorrow, and you'll leave the house to Ada. In that moment, any warmth I held for him turned cold. The way he wielded divorce as a threat was despicable, unforgivable. Disregarding my feelings and using divorce as a tool to enforce his will, could I let him get away with such behavior? Despite my simmering anger, my husband continued arrogantly, paying no heed to my emotional turmoil. Do you comprehend? If you don't vacate by tomorrow, we're ending our marriage. Are you truly serious? I questioned incredulously. Absolutely. You have no say in the matter. It would be quite inconvenient for you, being a homemaker, if we were to divorce, wouldn't it? Ha ha, it seems you grasp the situation. Good. I'm pleased you do. Ha ha. Therefore, you should hurry up and move over here. My mother is eager to educate you. Ha ha. Bob taunted, his tone laced with derision. And just like that, my husband abruptly terminated the call. Later on, I recounted the distressing situation to my dad and together, we devised a strategic plan. The following day, my husband called, his tone as cocky as ever. Hey, are you all packed up? Ha ha. Well, of course, he quipped. More importantly, when is Ada returning? I replied calmly. Tomorrow, why are you so fixated on Ada? He retorted. And then, in response to my inquiry, my husband's true intentions came to light. Well, you see, she's been making quite a fortune in stocks and investments. I see. So you're attempting to curry favor with her for financial support. Typical of you, I remarked. Believe what you will. I need you out by today, he demanded. Don't fret. I've already relocated, I assure him. What? His surprise was palpable in his voice. He likely expected me to comply obediently with his demands. His tone grew increasingly arrogant. Oh, I understand now. You never truly intended to divorce me. Ha <laughs> ha, that's logical. Without any income, he'd struggle to survive if we were to split. Ha <laughs> ha, it's true. For the time being, we're still legally married, so I'm even entertaining your call. But that won't last much longer, my husband remarked, 
his tone dripping with arrogance. What? You're serious about divorce? My words seemed to shake him to his core. You, what are you insinuating? You'll leave that house, won't you? You're coming back here immediately, right? He demanded. What? Why would I do that? I'd sooner face death than return to a home with an unreasonable husband and a meddling mother-in-law. I countered firmly. What? What are you saying? You agreed to leave the house, my husband explained. And that's exactly what I've done. I said I've already moved out, I responded calmly. Don't play games with me, he retorted. Then where are you? Panic tinged my husband's voice as he started to speak faster, a clear sign of his agitation. I'm at my parents' house now, I replied. What? But I relocated to the rural area where my parents reside. I won't be returning to your house, I clarified. Oh, I see. Relief flooded into my husband's voice. Well, it doesn't matter as long as I can give the house to Ada. $500,000, I stated firmly. What? The house I inherited from my father? You put it up for sale. So if you're serious about giving it to Ada, you'll need to buy it for $500,000. My tone remained resolute. What? You're, you're joking, right? My husband's disbelief was evident. Do I sound like I'm joking? The house is still in my father's name, so I've asked him to list it for sale. Actually, what I requested from my father was assistance with selling the house. I clarified. My father had always told me, you can live in it or sell it, whichever you prefer. Just inform me when the time is right. The appraisal came in at $500,000. Seeing the opportunity, I wasted no time in listing it for sale. It was a scenario he likely never anticipated. My husband struggled to articulate his thoughts, attempting to unleash his verbal fury. You, you must be joking. Acting on your own accord like this, I won't tolerate it. My husband protested. I don't require your approval. We're divorcing soon regardless, I countered. What did you just say? Do you comprehend your own situation? You'll be the one in trouble after the divorce. Being on my own, without your income, is far better than staying with you, I asserted. Listen, Ada will be returning home soon. I've already made it clear I'm counting on her financial support, I added firmly. So what? As I mentioned, if you're so keen on securing a place for Ada, why not just purchase the house for 500000 If you're able to, that is, I challenged. What? I can't possibly afford that, he retorted. Ada is earning from her investments, isn't she? She can buy it for $500,000, I suggested. No matter how wealthy Ada may be, that's an excessive amount, he argued. My husband persisted with excuses, showing no remorse or willingness to humble himself. Realizing that continuing the conversation would be futile, I resolved to speak my mind. I have no patience for the antics of a foolish mother and son. Did you truly believe that threatening me with divorce would compel me to obediently surrender the house? If you presumed that I would comply with your every whim simply because I'm a housewife, you're sorely mistaken. Hey, just calm down, he interjected. I am calm. It's you who should be panicking right now, isn't it? I refuse to blindly follow your commands. I categorically reject any further ties with your family. Stay out of my life forever. To hell with you and your precious mother, you jerk. I shouted loud enough for the neighbors to hear before abruptly hanging up the phone. Without hesitation, I blocked his number, severing all communication with my husband. Following that, I sought out a lawyer I trusted and initiated divorce proceedings. Despite the challenges, I ultimately succeeded in divorcing him on the grounds of his misconduct. As far as I know, he continues to reside in the condo with his mother-in-law. With my sister-in-law's impending return, they couldn't arrange for a larger residence. In the end, she flew back overseas in a fit of anger, exclaiming, This isn't what we agreed upon. My ex-husband's scheme to seek financial aid from his investment-savvy sister-in-law collapsed miserably. Presently, it seems they're barely getting by with the alimony I receive and the living expenses for his mother-in-law. With him still entangled in the demands of his mother-in-law, prospects for improvement seem bleak. On the contrary, 
I've been enjoying a peaceful life in the countryside with my parents since relocating. Recently, through a neighbor's recommendation, I secured a job as an office worker at a local orchard, providing me with a respectable income. For the time being, I intend to remain here, maintaining proximity to my parents to repay their kindness. 